someone, and I'm paraphrasing. If you have the power to help someone and you don't do it, that's sin. You can't call yourself a Christian and don't want to love people and don't want to help people. Something wrong with that. But also, you can't call yourself a Christian and you still want to smoke crack every day. That ain't a Christian. You still can't call yourself a Christian and you still want to fornicate every day. No, God gives you space to repent. But if you don't repent in that space of time, what if you die tomorrow? But you were still living a life of drugging and, and fornicating. That's what you're going straight to hell. I don't care how much you proclaim the name of Jesus. You can't live a life of sin and call yourself a Christian. Amen. I was watching the guy last night. He was very bold. He said all these people were talking about same-sex marriages. Marriages ain't no ministry. That's an institution by God. Amen. And I like what he said. He said, even though they got married, guess what? You ain't married. You stood before the world and said, I love this man and you a man. I love this woman and you a woman. Man can't sanction marriage. Marriage was founded by God. And he said it between the man and the woman. So they can marry all day long. And guess what? And they complain, they say they're Christians. But guess what? They go to hell. Hello. Now why does Jesus never talk about homosexuality? Jesus never talked about it. I can't find one scripture where Jesus talked about homosexual. But guess what? He talked about in the Old Testament. He said, don't do it. He just don't do it. I love you. He walked around, he walked around a whole bunch of sick folk. Because he loved them. And he helped them. He fed them. He clothed them. He visited them. But he did not compromise with them. Amen. That's the big one there. Romans 12, look at verse 16. Be of the same mind, one together, one toward another, rather. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to, one, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Uh -huh. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Yes. Therefore, if thine enemy Watch this. Here comes the hard part. If your enemy, if your enemy hunger, feed him. Yes. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt he cause a fire upon his head. Be not overcome evil. Right. But overcome evil with you. Yes, sir. Well, that's good. Yes, sir. And that's good. Well, but that's so hard. I remember when people were attacking me and the Lord spoke to me and said, go buy them a gift. What? <laughs> they lied on me. You know, they made up stories about me. Now, some of them weren't true, but I had been there. But they said, yeah, but they don't see your deliverance. Man. So go buy them a gift. Go buy that fool a gift. I ain't buying them nothing. That's how being God is to argue. Well, I ain't gonna bless you if you don't buy them a gift. I don't care if you don't bless me. I ain't buying them nothing. I ain't buying them nothing. <laughs> But you know, when you argue with your parents, you can't win. You, know, you can argue, but your parents always win the fight. So, Lord won the fight. I said, okay, Lord, I finally humbled myself because I wasn't moving. And I said, God, why these things happen? Because you ain't obeying me. Now, I told you, go buy your enemies again. Uh -huh. All right, Lord, I'm going to do it. What you going to do for me? See, there you go again. You're worried about what I'm going to do for you. Just go do what I told you to do. Don't worry about what I'm going to do. I'm getting the reapings of all that today, to be honest. Yes, sir. We're talking years ago, and I'm just now, because of humility and obedience to the word, things are starting to move in my life. Yeah, but what I'm talking about happened years ago. So I finally got up and said, okay, I'm going to go buy my gift. And I went to church, <laughs> ain't got a dime. I said, okay, they go so-and-so, I'm going to buy him one. And they go so-and-so, whatever, I'm going to buy him one. And they go so-and-so, I'm going to buy her one. And I'm sitting there saying, well, Lord, you got to provide. He said, don't worry, I will. Amen. Then all of a sudden, we in prayer, and I look up, and so-and-so, who I said, my enemy, I'm going to buy him a gift, came over to me and said, would you forgive me, brother? Amen. And so-and-so, who I said, I would buy a gift, walked from the other side and said, brother, you know, I love you, man, and, and I'm so, hello. 
Mm. See, when you humble yourself to God uh -huh, uh -huh. and tell him, okay, you ain't got to buy nothing. The gift was my forgiveness toward them that when it came in my heart, they didn't know in my mind the battle I had. Because at that time, I was like, don't even touch me. What do you talk about praying for me? But here they came. When I saw them coming, knowing the fight I had with the Lord in my head, amen, and they were coming, all I could do was hug them in. Amen. Amen. See? But it took obedience from me to say I will do it, Lord, despite how I think about it. Amen. Amen. Hope somebody got blessed by it. Let's go to, um, wait a minute, did we finish this? Yes, you did. All the way down? Amen. Let's go to uh, Matthew 6. But all I'm trying to say is, when you bless your enemy, it sows coals of fire upon their head. What does that mean, sow coals of fire? They start feeling bad about what they did. Amen. Amen. So every time somebody angry with you or mad at you and you know you didn't do that, half the time in the body of Christ, if you really serve God, you're usually innocent. But you're also, was Jesus innocent? But they hung him on a cross. Yes, even the thief on the cross with him said, this man never done nothing. nothing. We deserve what we get, but he ain't never done nothing. Remember me, Lord, when you're coming to your kingdom. Jesus. Matthew 6. Y'all get anything out of it? Yes. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, Matthew. Yes. Matthew 6, starting in verse 24. Verse 24. <laughs> See, when you when you sow coals of fire upon people's head, the other thing you gotta understand is that you can't go to God when you're angry with people Amen. and call yourself a Christian. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. You can't do that. You just can't. Because God says, I ain't hearing you. Because you have a hardened heart. You have a bunch of unforgiveness in your heart. And unforgiveness kills two people. Believe me. Why? A lot of people die from stroke and heart attacks because they've been holding that stuff and anger in their heart till it just explodes one day. You better learn how to let it go. But let's look at verse 24. Leave there that I give. Matter of fact, uh, how far do we go? Let's go to verse 22. <laughs> but I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoso shall say to his brother, Rekha, mm, mm, oh my goodness, whoo, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, the reason why I stopped that Rekha, Rekha is just an a, a Aramaic word that says you're empty-headed. You are so empty-headed. You can't tell your brother he's empty-headed. Because now you're talking about the condition of their heart and only God knows the condition of someone's heart. Amen? Then when he says thou fool, he's talking about you saying intellect. You call somebody, now it really takes me out to read this verse because later on down the line, Jesus called all the religious folk fools. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remembers that thy brother has an alt, has a problem against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Go get it right with your brother first, then go to God. But you can't, you cannot go to God and still have a problem with your brother. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. Agree with your adversary quickly. So go agree with your problem quickly. While thou art in the way with them, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou shalt be cast into prison. Truly, I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost fertility. You have heard that it was said by them of the old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh, uh, I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery uh, with her already where? In his heart. That's the only sin you can think about to get sin in the judgment. <laughs> you think about it, you got it. <laughs> that one always bothers me. <laughs> Soon as he say here, if that right eye offend thee, plug it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body.
body should be cast into hell. Now, what do you mean by the right eye? Your right eye represents your mind. So if that part of your mind represents, is bothering you, find a way to cast it out. Amen. Verse 30. And if thy right hand, and if thy right hand, now watch this. Now remember I said, the, 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 what did I say? The right eye represents the what? The mind. So, and if the right hand, now the right hand represents your activities. Because you can't do nothing without touching it. Okay? Oh, y'all get this. Okay. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saying, for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whoso shall say, marry her, that is divorced, committed adultery. And again, if you heard that it has been said by them of old times, thou shalt not uh, forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, Amen. neither by heaven, uh, for it is God's what? Throne. Amen. We swear on God all the time, don't we? Amen. But God, there's a verse in the Bible somewhere, I don't know where it is. But God said he couldn't find a man on earth so he had to swear by himself. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of meat in that verse. Boy, I could have preached on that all day, especially when it comes to marriage, but this ain't what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what, why, 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 and why Jesus is going to do what he needs to do concerning your complaining, concerning how to keep yourself out of hell, and watch this, it was never about you. Here's the main thing you need to get focused on. Start getting into Christ. Learn to get in Him. Amen. Then you will never have to complain. Amen? Then you will learn, my God, it ain't about me, but He loves me anyway. Amen. When you learn it ain't about you, it'll be all about you. Amen. Because you know who to serve. Amen? Amen. Let's go to uh, John 15. John 15. I feel like I've been up here an hour already. Good Lord. John 15. And look at verse 7. Verse 7. And it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be what? Done unto you. What does abide mean? Live in. Yeah. If you live in me, and my words live in you. Right. Then, whatever you ask, uh -huh. I'll give it. It don't mean all that wishful wish, wish, wish stuff. I'm going to throw money at the apostles' feet and I'm going to get a blessing. No. Live in him, and he lives in you. You get what you want. Because you're not self-motivated. But if you ain't living in him, and he ain't living in you, you can ask all day long. Well, my Jesus loves me. I do want to do this, and the first thing you want to do is go sin. Mm. No, that ain't Jesus. That's the devil. Amen. Believe me, I used to do that. Every time I thought I got a blessing and ran out to get high, I thought it was God. Now, you know that's stupid. No. No. I've been there bought some dope walking down the street and preaching and speaking in tongues. Thank being I'm happy. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Start at verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God 